Well, hey, everybody. I just love how God's timing works. I have been missing football. It's June, and it's another few months till the season starts. And a buddy of mine this weekend called me up and asked me if I wanted to watch the Kurt Warner movie. He said it was on his streaming uh, TV. And I said, sure, I haven't watched that in a, uh, a long time, like a year or something. I watched it a couple of times in the movie theaters, but uh, yeah, so that was fun. And then <clears throat> um, I told them about the interview at the beginning of the movie that I saw in the theaters that was really cool. We watched, we looked for it on YouTube and I couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm looking through my phone a few days later and I find it on my phone. I didn't realize or remember that I have, had even recorded it. It's, it's with uh, Steve uh, Mariucci and Kurt Warner and uh, they talk about their faith. They talk about uh, the whole football um, movie and how, how impacting it is. Anyway, it is a great movie, The American Underdog, and uh, this might be a copyright violation, but I wanted to put it out there just because it needs to be out there. I like that this video or this uh, interview. And by the way, that uh, I did meet Kurt Warner. That's his inter autographed inter or <laughs> autographed uh, picture. And if you know anything about uh, Kurt and his faith, um, he'd love me to share the verse of the day. And that's what I'm going to do right now. The verse of the day is from Galatians 5. Uh, verse 14, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, I love that. And after the video, I'll show you a couple of little fun activities I got to do at the new Rams field in Los Angeles. I was able to go there this year. Yes, I am still a Rams fan, even though they left St. Louis. Who you and your wife, Brenda? Well, I mean, it's obviously surreal. Uh, you know, you hear people talk about it for years. Oh, your story's made for the big screen. But to actually see it come to pass, see some incredible actors, actresses, You've got an unbelievable cast. But there's a lot of emotions that come with it. Obviously, you're excited. You're excited to be able to use your journey to hopefully inspire and encourage other people. But it also brings some anxiety and some nervousness that you want the story to be done right. You want people to be connected to the story. And uh, anytime you put that stuff out there, there's all those emotions that come with it. How involved then were you in the filmmaking process? I was actually really involved. Everything from the script, being able to write the script and, and kind of shape the script, to Brendan and myself being on set uh, and giving input on different things. And again, it's always hard to let go of your story. Things that you know are really connected to you but there's times you gotta step back and trust the people that understand that world and understand the, the movie that they're trying to make. And then there were other times that they allowed us to come in and have input and do things that I believe made the movie better. I'll mention the Arizona Cardinals because some of those fans probably saying, hey, why weren't we involved in this movie? You chose to end the movie with your Super Bowl win with the Rams. Right. right. Uh, well, I guess that's we've got to save that for the sequel, right? There's going to be part two uh, of the movie. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it was just the natural ending to the story. I mean, what everybody knows is the, the rags to riches part of it, going from uh, supermarket to the Super Bowl. And so it just seemed like the fitting place to start, even though there were some incredible moments uh, and incredible things in my career that came after that. But as everybody saw in the movie, a big key for us wasn't just telling the football side of it. It was sharing the other part of the story, my wife's story, my son's story, how together we were able to accomplish this thing and, and be a part of something really, really special. And so uh, trying to put all that together, you have to figure out and fine tune, okay, what is the story? What is the time period? And we just felt like that was the right timing to, uh, to tell the story. Well, you mentioned your son, Zach, and what an inspiration he is to all of us. And, and he was a large part of the narrative of this story. What was it like for Zach personally to know that he was a character in a movie? I'm not sure if Zach fully understands and grasps what that means. You know, my son suffered a traumatic brain injury, was four months old, and so there's been a lot of struggles and challenges along the way, but I think that's one of the coolest things as we go through these different journeys, whether it was mine or Brenda's or Zach's, uh, you oftentimes go, okay, why? You know, why did Mooch have to cut me? You know, what, why did I not get to make it at Green Bay and things not work out in my favor? And then you look back years and years later and you say, man, it's pretty incredible that even something as big of a tragedy as, as Zach's injury, to see how it's impacting families and impacting people, and it's been the inspiration for stuff that we're doing off the field. And I think this movie um, and his story 
will inspire a lot of people. Yeah. You know, as Zach met Hayden, the actor who played Zach in the movie? Yes, we actually had an event where they actually met for the first time, got up on stage together, and I mean, just Hayden in and of itself, obviously the movie's called American Underdog, so you take my story, my wife's story, my son's story, but if you actually heard Hayden's story, who yeah. is fully blind, uh, you know, one of the first young actors to ever play a major role in a movie that's, that's fully blind, I mean, there's just so many incredible things to his story as well, and so it was really neat uh, to see them meet the first time and the admiration that they had for each other. Kurt, what is your hope for this film and, and how will it inspire people? You know, our hope is that different people get different things from the movie. We tried to design the movie with numerous different storylines. Of course, we want them to be inspired and encouraged to look at their circumstances and be challenged to move forward and chase after what they want in life. That's my hope, is that when it's all said and done, I can talk to different people and different people will say, hey, Kurt, I got this out of it, or, or I got that out of it, and it's not just one message. There's a lot of other things in there that I believe will really touch people, and that to me will, will let me know that we made a really good movie. Well, I'm proud to be a very small part of your journey, and if, it, if this film is anything like the rest of your career, it will be very successful very much loved by a lot of different people, not just football fans, like you said. Congratulations. Well, well tell, how does it feel to really be the impetus behind the story? Like, if you wouldn't have cut me... <laughs> no, I, 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 you, say, you, I, I know, I we, we, we got to bust your chops. Thanks, but, Coach, because it gave me an opportunity to do something else. Exactly. We talked about this 5,000 times. Right. And, and it's funny, the Lord works in strange ways, yeah. right? Yeah. And sometimes you never know when a door is closed, what other door comes yeah. open. Well, and, yeah. and we talk about it all the time, and it's a great line in the movie that, you know, we always joke that you cut me. And in the movie, as you said, and as you say to me all the time, no, you cut you. You know, this is all about you, that, that you weren't ready for that. And yeah. it's, it's so true that sometimes we find ourselves in, in places in life that we're really not quite ready for yet. I'm fortunate that I had that time to become the person that I wanted to be, and I believe that's really what helped the story to become what it is. And, and that's so important, what you just said. You, you acknowledge that you weren't ready at that time, and people have to know that sometimes they're just not ready, but you can get ready. Yeah. Find a way to work at it, right? Whether it takes a month or a year, five years, and find a way to get ready, and that's the, that's the journey that you went through. You got ready in a great way. Yeah. We will rally around Kurt Warner. And we'll play good football. Dick Vermeil, I was the head football coach of St. Louis Rams when Kurt Warner played there. I can relate to Kurt Warner. I know what it is to be given the opportunity to climb. And I always appreciated the people that provided me those opportunities to go ahead and make the next step. Kurt Warner did that, high school, College, late in college, get to play an attempt at the Packers, a failure, arena football, come with us one year, and then the next year he's the most valuable player in the league. And I can relate to that kind of story. Players put into action what you hope you taught them, both on and off the field. And I don't know if anyone's ever done a better job of doing that than Kurt Warner. And I'd like to think because of my decision, my staff decisions, our program, Mike Martz and the offensive staff, we were part of what developed Kurt Warner and made him a Hall of Famer. Well, he is a big part of why I'm a finalist for the Hall of Fame. Without him, I am not. And maybe without us, he is not. And it's a good feeling. We're in it together. Coming up through coaching like I did through the high school level all the way into the NFL level, I just felt that it was important for a coach to first be a person that coaches people that play football. You coach the entire person, the entire squad, in more ways than just how they block and tackle and throw passes or run with the ball. And uh, that was always deeply ingrained in my philosophy of coaching. It's, you know, you can have confidence in one thing, but if you have real strong self-esteem, you have a lot of confidence in a lot of things. It helps you create a momentum in your own beliefs as you grow. So I, I always tried to coach a person from the head down, these players are people first, and, and people win games. We are on SoFi Field, and there's the end zone. And we were able to jog the 40-yard dash 
my colleague thought we were racing, I kept him behind me. Well, first things first, I got to give praise and glory to my Lord and Savior up above. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.